Well, hello, welcome to the Scourge and Quantum Field Theory. We will be talking about standard model and gauge symmetries. My name is Adriana, and the topics for today will be standard model, and we will talk about fermion masses, boson masses, and also we will see how we obtain all of the vertices in standard model. So, shall we start with the first topic? In the original Lagrangian, a fermion mass term such as the one we see here was excluded by gauge invariance. Now, the same Higgs doublet that generates the masses for the Ws and the zeta gauge bosons is sufficient to give masses to the fermions, so leptons and quarks. So, let's see an example. Let's generate the mass for the electron and we will include the following SU2U1 gauge invariant term in the Lagrangian. So here we see these are basically the left-handed uh, leptons, lepton doublet with the right-handed electron. And uh, we see both terms that need to be taken into account with the Higgs doublet. Now, we spontaneously break the symmetry by choosing the vacuum to be this one and then we substitute it into the Lagrangian and the new expression that we will obtain will be this one where we have combinations of left-handed electrons and right-handed electrons and we will see that the first term will be the mass term for the electron and the second the interaction term coupling of the electrons with the Higgs scalar. So the mass for the electron can be deduced from this expression. And uh, since the, the lambda term is an arbitrary term, the actual mass of the electron cannot be predicted. So the quark masses are generated in the same way and we find the same problem. The quark masses are generated in the same way. The only new feature we need to introduce is that to generate a mass from the upper member of a quark doublet, we must contract a new Higgs doublet. Now again, we break the symmetry and, uh, and then the new expression for the Lagrangian will be this one. So here we see the expression for the Lagrangian the first two terms are the mass terms for the up and down quark, and the third and fourth term are the interactions with the, the Higgs particle. As we see, this is the vertex, the vertex of the theory. Again, lambda is an arbitrary coupling, and the mass of the quark cannot be predicted. It will be again an input. Now, uh, from these expressions, so we um, basically we work these expressions out to obtain the masses of the quarks and of the um, 
leptins, but we also obtain interaction vertices with uh, the Higgs sector. But uh, from these expressions, we can obtain the Yukawa Lagrangian. So the Yukawa Lagrangian describes the masses of the fermions, so the first, second, and third family generation fermions, and this is basically the expression. So the minimal choice of a single of Higgs doublet is enough to generate masses of gauge bosons and fermions. But the masses of the fermions are just parameters of the theory and they are not predicted. Their empirical value must be an input. However, the Higgs coupling to the fermions is proportional to their masses. Now we will put together everything we have seen in all the previous lessons. The standard model of particle physics is the theory describing three or four known fundamental forces, so electromagnetic weak and strong interactions, omitting gravity, and uh, classifying all of the known elementary particles. In this section we will obtain the interaction vertices for all these forces. So let's start writing down the expression for the standard model Lagrangian. We see here that the first term of the standard model Lagrangian is the QCD Lagrangian. So the QCD Lagrangian describes the interaction of color quarks and vector gluons with a coupling specified by G. And it arises by demanding that the Lagrangian is invariant under local color phase transformations. We have introduced six gauge fields, the gluons, in order for this theory to be gauge invariant. And here we have that the first term is the kinetic term, and the second the mass term for the interacting color fermions. Then we have the kinetic term for the gluons, which is also the auto-interaction term, because when we develop this expression we have obtained the kinetic term, and also this interaction, auto-interaction terms for these gluons. Then, as I said, we have the mass and the kinetic terms for the quark, which come from the first term. And then the last term is basically the interaction term, the vertex of the theory. It describes the interactions between gluons and quarks. However, local invariance requires gluons to be massless, since we cannot find a mass term that is gauge invariant. But uh, let's see how the electroweak Lagrangian works. So let's leave these interactions here on the top and let's continue with the second term for the standard model Lagrangian, the electroweak Lagrangian, which uh, comes from electrodynamic and weak theory. This Lagrangian basically involves fermion and gauge Lagrangians. So, to work with electroweak theory, we introduced four gauge fields to three Ws in a B boson, which later on turned into physical states. And uh, we write down the electroweak Lagrangian, and we see that we have the kinetic term for the fermion and the interaction terms for the fermions with the W and B bo gauge bosons. And then we have uh, this gauge fixing and the fadet popov Lagrangian term, which we will not develop or study because we didn't do it 
for QED or QCD. So these are the field strength, ter field strength tensors of these vector bosons. And uh, we see that there are a few, uh, there are more terms that in QED that arise from the non-abelian character of the symmetry. So from the Fermian part of the Lagrangian, we will obtain interaction vertices such as this that we see in the screen. So interactions of fermions with photons, zetas and w's. And um, this is what will happen. And here we have charge currents and neutral currents. So the two on the right are charge currents, the two on the left are neutral currents. So from the field strength sensors, we see that self-interaction terms arise. So for three gauge bosons or four gauge bosons, and we see different combinations of those. And finally, we see the last two terms of this standard model Lagrangian. Uh, these terms are responsible for the masses of this, for the masses of the particles, so the masses of the bosons and of the fermions. So the spontaneous breaking symmetry Lagrangian and the Yukawa Lagrangian. And from both terms, we obtain the masses for the particles. So we work the expressions out and we obtain a Lagrangian for the Higgs sector, which basically describes the interaction of the Higgs particle with fermions and uh, also the self-interaction terms of this Higgs particle with itself. So we find three and four Higgs vertices. And uh, then we also see that this Higgs particle has certain vertices with the W bosons and the zeta bosons. This is what we basically explained in the previous lesson. So I have already talked a lot about quantum field theory, now I will speak about the status of Higgs physics, but at colliders, so at some of the experiments of the Large Hadron Collider, such as ATLAS or CMS, or perhaps as Tevatron in Fermilab. We will turn into this new subject. So, I have different topics I want to talk about. I will first start with a little introducing the concept. So, we will imagine an empty region of space, a perfect vacuum, without any matter present in it. 
Quantum field theory tells us that this hypothetical region is not really empty. Particle-antiparticle pairs associated with different quantum fields pop into existence briefly before annihilating and transforming into energy. However, the expectation value of these fields in a vacuum is zero, implying that on average we can expect there to be no particles within this perfect vacuum. The Higgs field, on the other hand, has a really high expectation value. This non-zero vacuum expectation value means that the Higgs field is everywhere. Its omnipresence is what allows the Higgs field to affect all known massive elementary particles in the entire universe. When the universe had just come into a being and was extremely hot, its energy density was higher than the energy associated with the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs field. And as a result, the symmetries of the standard model could hold, allowing particles to be massless. As the universe started to cool down, the energy density dropped until fractions of a second after the Big Bang, it fell below that of the Higgs field. This resulted in the symmetries being broken and certain particles gained mass. Well, let's talk a little bit about the experimental profile of the Higgs sector in these colliders. Uh, let's introduce uh, a little bit of this history, the history of the discovery of the Higgs particle, and then talk about the different production and decay mechanisms or channels that we find in these Hadron colliders. And finally, I will also introduce a little bit of new Higgs physics, uh, because we might all know that standard model theory is an incomplete theory and there are certain things that aren't explained by this theory such as for example the mass of the neutrinos since standard model doesn't allow for massive neutrinos although we find that neutrinos oscillate and for that they need mass so everything started after combining all of the channels it was found that the standard model Higgs boson could be excluded for all masses except for a small window around 125 giga electron volts, where an excess with a significance of around 3 sigma was observed in 2011. Then we increased the energy of the cross sections, so we, inc we increased the energy of the experiments, ADLAS and CMS, from 7 to 8 tera electron volts, and then the corresponding cross sections also increased. And the bump, the significance with which we could observe this bump around 125 giga electron volts, also increased. So the discovery of this resonance of this Higgs particle was made in tw uh, tw 2011, in, in 2012, sorry, uh, by the Atlas and CMS collaborations. Then. There were many runs, uh, well, many runs, there were two runs, run one and run two. They were both used by this uh, Large Hadron Collider to study the properties of this electroweak symmetry breaking mechanism. And this was done from 2009 to 2012 until we, find, we found the, um, the Higgs particle. And then there was a second run in which we increased the energy of center of mass of the colliders to 13 tera electron volts. And this was the way to measure with a higher precision the Higgs boson and to study and to put in solid grounds the compatibility of the measured resonance with the Higgs boson of standard model. So this was the moment in which we could already say that this resonance that was measured was, was the Higgs boson we had been looking for for a long time. So now let's talk about the production mechanisms of Triadron Colliders. So this is the Higgs sector Lagrangian. We already saw this 
Lagrangian. There are many terms here. The first term explains the interaction of the Higgs particles with fermions. The second and third term are the self-interaction uh, vertices of the Higgs. So we have three Higgs vertices and four Higgs vertices. And then we find two vertices for the Higgs and uh, the vector bosons, so the zetas and the w's. Now, this, we see that this interaction vertices, so the coupling of this interaction vertices, depends on the masses of the particles they couple to. So they, this coupling is string, strong for heavy particles such as uh, the W's and the zeta bosons, but it's weak for small particles such as uh, such as the quark. And basically, by knowing to watch to what the six particle couples, we can obtain certain production mechanisms at this hadron colliders. In this uh, picture here, we see different processes. Uh, through which we produce this Higgs particle, or we try to produce it at hadron colliders. So we have gluon fusion, in which uh, this is a one-loop process. So two gluons produce uh, T quarks, so top quarks, and and this a loop of two top quarks, and these produce uh, a, a Higgs particle. And there are more processes such as this too. And this is what is basically calculate, uh, measured, or what we expect to measure in this Hadron Colliders. However, in this new slide, you can see that uh, all these processes, before measuring them or after measuring them, there are many... This is the state of art of theoretical calculations. So there are certain codes or programs uh, that we make up and they contain certain calculations that can take place and with that we work with uh, the different information so all the data we received in, in the CERN, in, in Fermilab or wherever, in whatever accelerator is used all this is evaluated using these programs so for example, uh, for the interaction, the blue square the blue square is the gluon fusion, and the gluon fusion can have many contributions. Uh, in the first program, uh, cro programs that are called HIGLU or Ixis, Fehil Pro, or another one which I can't read, they this uh, this calculate the scattering amplitude, taking into account the next to next to next to leading order of QCD and the next to leading order of RF electroweak theory. And then we have a program just below, which is called HRES, and this calculates this uh, contribution using a next to leading order and a next to next to leading order of QCD. So this is how it works. This is what we call a state of art of the theoretical calculations because it's the newest and the latest that we have. Or it should be. And it's basically the theoretical calculations we later on use to evaluate the data. Next, in this slide, we obtain, we obtain the predictions, the basic theoretical predictions for the cross sections that we could find at the Large Hadron Collider, which is uh, all the information in the blue box, or for Tevatron in Fermilab which is the red box. So what is actually in these boxes is the, um, is the center of mass energy that we find in, in the accelerator. And what we see here are the cross sections for different processes that are on the left. So on, the, on these diagrams are the left and these is what we observe or what, what we expect to observe because these are the theoretical calculations and we see that the the highest cross sections are for the next two for the pp pro processes that produce Higgs, and then also to all those processes that produce 
quarks in Higgs followed by the processes that produce uh, the W's in the Higgs. So this is like from the higher to the lower cross sections. And uh, this is for a mass of 125 giga electron volts. And here we see also that in the graphic you see that these calculations are made to until uh, taking into account certain theories. For example, the the, the highest cross section takes into account next to next to next to leading order of QCV and next to leading order of electroweak theory. And and this is how it works. Now about the decay mechanisms at Hadron colliders. Well, uh, here we are talking again about predictions, theoretical predictions. The there are certain squares that are in red. The squares in red are the most dominant processes that we will find in in this in in the accelerator. And then in blue we will have the next most dominant decays. Now on the graphic on the right, this is how this decay uh, decays work. So we see that uh, we expect the Higgs mass to fall at a range of 125 giga electron volts, although nothing seems to tell us that in this graphic. And what we see the thick lines. These thick lines are actually related to uncertainties in branching ratios, which include the missing higher order corrections and the theoretical calculations, as well as errors in the standard model input parameters, in particular fermion masses and QCD gauge couplings, which are involved in the decay. Now, in this slide, the, this new slide, we actually observe processes that are not very probable, so they are they have a small probability to happen in comparison with the earlier slide, but these are what we call high precision channels. These channels are used to measure the mass of the Higgs. I already told you in in this lesson actually that there are certain values that need to be an input parameter. So the lambda the lambda Higgs term, the lambda masses, uh, and the um, no, the lambda Higgs couplings to the fermions and, and to the um, uh, to the fermions, and also the masses for the Higgs. These are parameters that are arbit are arbitrary, and they are not calculated. They need to be an input of standard model, and this is what we try to determine. Now, remember that I told you that uh, we saw in a bump on around 125 giga electron volts on, on the second run, we see that this is observed in a more clear way. So here we observe the bump, and this is actually observed through this precision channel, uh, a Higgs particle decaying into two photons. So these are actually uh, experimental um, data. So this is this is observed. This is not not a theoretical calculation, and it's pretty interesting. Well, and finally, we have um, just a small idea of uh, new Higgs physics. As I already said, standard model is not enough to explain all things that happen in our universe. So there are there are many models, different models, that try to explain many things that do not work very correctly. For example, uh, here are some, here's a listing with many things, many theories that um, try to explain what uh, we observe. And uh, one of them is, for example, composite Higgs model. So, composite Higgs model. We find uh, different problems. One of them is that Higgs particle is measured to and is stated to be of around 125 giga electron volts and we expect this to be uh, too small and also this the, the mass is also very fine tuned and it there is no electroweak symmetry breaking origin at mean at least dynamically and a solution that is proposed 
is uh, how Higgs bound state. So many Higgs that are so many Higgs uh, being bound together, forming a bigger state, a bound state, and becoming strong at electroweak scale. And such as this, there are many other models that try to explain things in a different way. Well, I hope you liked my explanation, although it was very brief because lots of things that uh, need to be explained to understand everything. But I just hope you liked it and um, thank you for listening to the curse and I hope you enjoyed. So goodbye.